A viewer asked if I could compare the i5-3570 against the i7-3770. Sure, since I already used both of these CPUs in recent videos, I can just use that footage and do a quick comparison. This i5 and i7 are very similar. Both run at the same speeds, although the i7 can turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz, but that's for single threads only. Both have the same amount of cache, except for the L3 cache, which the i7 has two megs more of. Also, not shown here, the i5 used Intel's 2500 integrated HD graphics, where the i7 used the 4000 line. Both were released around the same time, and both had a 77 watt CDP. The i7, however, had hyperthreading and sold for about $100 more. So was it worth the price? Did that extra cash and hyperthreading really make a $100 difference? One thing I'm not testing here is the integrated graphics, and that in itself could be worth it. However, I think most people would have just used a GPU if they cared that much. So with only a few improvements, was this i7 worth it? Well, Passmark shows the i7 as having a pretty decent lead on the i5, while the memory scored about the same, which makes sense. Using these CPUs to mine Monero show the i7 having a higher hash rate by about 600 hashes per second. Since XMRig only uses physical cores, most likely it's the extra L3 cache that's, you know, that's helping here. In 7-zip, they were almost neck and neck, but the i7 pulled slightly ahead, finishing 8 seconds sooner. Now in real life, you'd never notice that. And yes, it does show a different compressed size, but uh, that's just the interface not updating. For Cinebench, I tested in both single-thread and multi-threaded modes. Uh, the single-threaded run shows the i5 falling behind, but only by about a minute 40. The multi-threaded run showed the i7 finishing only about a minute sooner, but it scored about a thousand points higher. Now, that doesn't seem like a huge difference. However, you may be the type of person who needed every bit of speed available. With video editing, both had decent encoding speeds, but the i7 encoded 8 FPS faster on average and finished about three minutes sooner. As usual with the YouTube playback test, I play these videos in a browser with all hardware acceleration disabled, so it's only the CPU that's doing the work. And while well, as you can see, both play the video just fine with really no noticeable differences. Heaven showed the i7 again pulling ahead, 32 FPS higher on average, and I believe the reasoning has to do with it turboing about 100 megahertz higher more often than the i5, not to mention that extra cache. Superposition also showed a pretty decent improvement with the i7 scoring 1600 points higher with the average frame rate being around 12 FPS higher. The Unreal Engine was a masterpiece and would take advantage of anything you threw at it. Here in Unreal Tournament 3, the i7 is averaging about 200 FPS higher. As you can see, obviously both run perfect, but an extra 200 FPS? Yeah, I'll take that. GTA 4 always could use all the help it could get. However, on the i5, this ran very smoothly and was always well over 60 FPS. The i7, however, took it to the next level with frame rates 50 to 60 FPS higher than the i5. While playing GTA 5, I didn't notice much of a difference. Both felt about the same and had about the same frame rate. The benchmark was a completely different story. The frame rates bounced around quite a bit. However, the i7 was consistently 5 to 10 FPS faster than the i5. Both, though, ran GTA 5 without any issues. Even the load times were similar. BeamNG loves threads, so it's no surprise that the i7 having twice as many threads as the i5 ran about twice as fast.
The i7 scored an average frame rate of 43 FPS, while the i5 did nearly half at 24 FPS. Need for Speed Most Wanted is an older game, and it doesn't really take advantage of or really need any of the extra resources provided by the i7. Therefore, both performed about the same. And as usual, our wonderful Portal 2 ran fantastic on both with similar frame rates. I also ran Y Cruncher on both. The i7 was faster, but only finished a few seconds sooner, but that still makes for a 10% improvement. Now one thing you might have noticed throughout all the testing is the CPU speeds. The i7 often was clocked 100 megahertz higher than the i5. Now the only difference in hardware was the CPU. Literally everything else and all power settings were exactly the same. The i7 is just set up slightly different and it clocks itself 100 megahertz higher than the i5 in similar workloads. That along with the extra cache and additional threads, well that explains the increased performance we see. It's not that much, but it's enough. Now was it worth $100 more to buy this i7 over the i5? Well that would have been up to you. This i5 performed great and it was more than sufficient for most people, but some need that extra little bit. Personally, I think the price was fair. Those extra threads and the revised boost schedules, well, it helps. Now, if all you did was light gaming and web browsing, like I said before, the i5 was more than sufficient. So if you're still here, thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Still working on an update to the FX series, so keep an eye out for those, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.